is Weekly Weird News, and this week we're starting things off with an unexpected crossover between two recurring story topics that we've been covering for years. Disney adults. Why are you pointing at me? I'm just I'm on <laughs> Disney adults. Just a, just a natural reaction. Well, you're going to like this. Disney adults and people who poop in public. Ah, yes. Elliot, classic public pooper. I wasn't pointing at me. I, was, uh, I, wasn't, pointing, I wasn't pointing at anyone. It was subconscious, and I think everyone understands what you were I doing. I mean, I have pooped in public. Once. Oh, well, you know what? And I had to do it. I took you to Disney last year, and I said when we were there, I was like, everyone complains about Disney adults until you need one, because I got us on all the rides as quickly as possible. That's right. They're like lawyers. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Poop news. We're putting the, the gross story right at the top this week so that you can skip to the next chapter if you'd like to enjoy your news poop free. Mm -hmm. But for the rest of us, the brave, we're diving straight in. Yeah. Diving straight into that poop. Uh, this news comes to us via the San Francisco Gate, who we also recently sourced when they wrote an article about how common it is for people to puke up their bottomless mimosas at brunch restaurants. I, they're really killing it in the bodily excretions news beat. Yeah. So let's just read from their coverage of the public pooping problem at Disney's theme parks. It sounds too disgusting, too outlandish to be real. A Disneyland urban legend of the gross-out variety that people are dropping trowel and pooping where they stand while in line for rides. But unfortunately for the weak-stomached, this rumor is absolutely real. Twice in the last month, posters on the Disney World subreddit commented in fury and horror about the cursed things they'd seen while waiting in line. I am in the queue for Rise of Resistance. Someone let their kid take a dump on the floor, and then they just walked out and left it. What the fuck? One wrote recently. That fecal sighting was supported almost in real time by a commenter who said they worked at the attraction. For the skeptics, this actually happened. Fun fact, this was one of three shit-related incidents at Rise today. Less fun fact, I was here for all three of them, a user responded. That's just one ride. And one, one line that hundreds, thousands of people are going through. In, uh, of all places. Shit everywhere. Of all places, Disney World, which has multiple theme parks with uh, what I assume adds yeah. up to multiple dozen rides. If we extrapolate here, this is hundreds of poops per day. There is so much. Thousands per year. Yeah. Millions in the entire history of the park. I think as a result of this article, someone is going there with a Q-tip and start swabbing and see what's really going down. Because mm -hmm. I, I, just going to any theme park, but even Disney, I guess just going in public in general, especially since the pandemic, when I touch something, no thanks. Yeah, but Luckily, also, a lot of things are hands-free today. But also, the fact that like we've never encountered any of these poops, despite them being so common, is a testament to how, how ninja-like the uh, cleaning staff at these parks are. That like they are, they're like assassins. Yeah, they have they they should have uh, poop smelling dogs instead of bomb dogs. Like there was that uh, that Banksy documentary like ten years ago where he snuck into Disneyland and did a little art piece there, and like that shit was gone in like a minute. Yeah, like they they called it in, and that shit was. You, it's one of the most surveilled places it, possible. Yeah, uh, and still people poop. Yeah, nevertheless they nevertheless poop they <laughs> defecated. Yeah. So, okay, first off, my immediate reaction to this news, aside from disgust, is that this is the obvious outcome of Disney getting rid of FastPass and replacing it with a smartphone app that is so unintuitive that you need to watch tutorials on YouTube to even know how to use it. And in watching those videos, you also will find out that uh, you actually should have woken up at 5 a.m. because that's when all of the Disney freaks booked their lightning lane slots, which are now no longer available. Hey, that's why you can count on me or just have a friend who <laughs> who goes to Disneyland by himself. Look, it's a there's a <laughs> lot going on in the world, and it gives me the escapism that I need. And I don't go all the time. I've been twice this year. Okay, all right. You're not getting your money's worth. I'll I, well, I'll be back at the end of the month for the Christmas celebrations, obviously. Okay. But okay. Uh, but yeah, the fast pass. Uh, people are waiting. In, they're waiting in long lines, and it used to be easy to avoid that. But now. They brought technology into it, and yeah, long lines and short colons don't mix. No. But with that rant out of the way, here's more from the article. On another thread, a commenter bemoaned the behavior of park guests at the wildly popular attraction Flight of Passage. Uh, that's the, the Avatar one, I think. Mm -hmm. 
Bodily fluids no longer bother me after working at Disney, they wrote. Let's just say that the attraction I work at has what the cast ended up dubbing the poop hall because of the amount of times guests have gone in there and pooped. We even put up a camera and it didn't stop it. Good Lord, the poop hallway. Another commenter <laughs> responded, adding, from a former flight CM, this absolutely gives me war flashbacks. I dealt with way too many bodily fluids at that dang attraction. This is even more disgusting because this is a ride where you like saddle up and sit on something. Yeah, they're and, like, sitting on you there with touching a, all over this ride. Yeah, someone took a shit. They didn't wash their hands. They got doo-doo ass, doo-doo hands. And uh, yeah, I, I've actually, I looked up, uh, I went on YouTube, but I was like, uh, I looked up, you know, POV, what the, the queue looks like. Mm -hmm. I couldn't, there was like one area, I'm like, this kind of meets, fits the description, but you'd have to be real bold. It's a very elaborate queue. Uh, and they have one of those avatars floating in a, in a little aquarium. Yeah. It's uh, it's very cool. It's a very cool ride. I'm sure it is. I've seen the animatronics. It's crazy. No, that's a different ride. That's the Navi River Voyage. Oh, there's multiple avatar rides? The av the, the big crazy one is like uh, Soren, but like in a much more technological Soren? advanced like, ride. Like, like Soren over California? Uh-huh. But that one's got avatar in it? So you're in the avatar world. You're, you're sitting on one of the... Why would I want to be in avatar world when I can be in the best place in the real world? California. While in a California theme park. That's right. It, smell they only, they only it smells like oranges. How do they do that? Well, they only play that one uh, for a month every year because it's soaring around the world the rest of the time. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. It's always, every time I've gone, it's been soaring, whatever, whatever. Elliot only goes for the food festival. Uh, if, if they're playing anything other than soaring California, I ain't interested. <laughs> Anyways, the article then references a book published a few years back by some former Disney employees titled Cleaning the Kingdom, Insider Tales of Keeping Walt's Dream Spotless. In the book, they reveal that the internal code name for a poop incident is Human Code H. Code H was originally just for dealing with horse shit, but human shit was such a common problem that Human Code H was needed. And here's the book's description of one Human Code H incident. There's a pair of individual use restrooms just backstage from the north unload. It was mainly for cast members, but guests could and did use it. A woman who did not know this burst into the control room for the attraction and deposited her gift right there. It must have been challenging for the ride operator to stay at their post in there before it was all cleaned up. Yeah, that is rough. Being at one of the one of the key jobs that you you can't just get out of your chair. I can't leave. look away. You have to stay I have to there. Monitor. People's lives are in your hands. Yeah. And you have to power through the overwhelming stench of human poop and you know that that poop is from eating the worst theme park food Not only all day that. long. Not only that. In the hot Florida sun. But that's what you experience in any uh, uh, festival porta potty or gas station bathroom is the people that are using that to go number two mm -hmm. are in a desperate state. Yeah. So whatever comes out of them is going to be the worst possible thing that they can produce. Yeah, it's not good. It's not good. Yeah. And I do want to say, obviously, they are singling out Disney here. It's, uh, I mean, I'm sure, yeah, every theme park has... This is only a story because uh, uh, if you go to Six Flags, they just leave the poop everywhere. They don't care. Right. That's part of the ambiance. Yes. It actually hides the even worse smells. It makes you even more excited to get up on that roller coaster away from the stench of the poop. Have you seen how many roller coasters they have? Yeah, well, it's covered in shit. Yeah, but they've got like 15 roller coasters. It's not even the guests doing it. Like, There's like dudes in Porky Pig and uh, yeah. Bugs Bunny costumes just, pfft, just pooping, mm -hmm. you know? Because that's all the, that's what the Looney Tunes have been relegated to. Yeah, they're it's just shitting on the floor at six. They're just sparks. filthy mascots. Oh, you're gonna get a, a really cool looking movie with the the Roadrunner and the Coyote? No, nope. no, you're not. The I'm David. Be... I'm David Zaslav, and I'm sending the Looney Tunes back to Six Flags to poop on the ground. Yeah, and they're gonna like it. Whoo! Anyway, that's enough poop news for today. Oh, thank goodness. And hello to everyone who skipped ahead. It's time now for penis news. Skip, 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 skip. <laughs> no skip. skip. Skip, skip, skip. Not just talking about any penis here. Uh -huh. There's billions of those. Yeah. The penis we're talking about is Brian Johnson's Johnson. Ah. And if you're somehow still unaware of Brian Johnson at this point, that is kind of unbelievable because this man's PR representatives have done an incredible job just keeping him in the news cycle constantly. Inescapable. Uh, but basically, for some background, Brian Johnson is a millionaire tech guy who has decided to dedicate his fortune and his life to making himself younger. And unlike other rich people with similar goals, Johnson's Project Blueprint is less about cosmetic surgery and more about uh, somehow biohacking his body into being 
literally younger. Yeah. However, when you actually look at Brian Johnson and find out that he is 46 years old, it's hard to be all that impressed. Okay. Yeah, he just looks like a guy in his 40s who at least takes care of himself. I mean, that's not especially He's in great shape, but like but... you hang out in Santa Monica, you see like 10 of these. Yeah. In 10 minutes. Uh-huh. Just go down to the Erewhon. You see them all over the place. <laughs> What's noteworthy is that despite the results really not speaking for themselves, Johnson's health regimen is ridiculous. He dedicates every waking moment to his quest for eternal youth, and it seems like a giant, expensive hassle. Not just for him, but for those around him as well, like Johnson's teenage son, who basically serves as his blood boy. Not basically. He is. Literally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He is the blood boy. And last we checked, Brian Johnson seemed particularly obsessed with his penis. His own penis. Not his, t- not his teenage son's penis. But he does want his penis to resemble his teenage son's penis, so he, I'm, I'm assuming he checks it as a reference to compare. Nothing sexual. Nothing weird about it. He wants the body of an 18-year-old. Phrasing. Uh, And a vital part of that is having the penis of an 18-year-old. There's no escaping the phrasing in this story at all. His own penis. (laughs) Yes. And the key to achieving that is apparently getting a bunch of extremely painful penis injections. (laughs) Ah, this will do the trick. Yeah, he, like, every two weeks he's, like, talking to some news outlet or some podcast, like, yeah, my life's fucking hell. Just beating the shit out of my penis. I'm extending the the length of my hellish life. Yeah, I'm doing, I'm basically doing cock and ball torture, but it's not that. It's for science. I'm not getting off on it. It's for science. And it's totally cool and totally legal. Yeah. I I just got to do it. I do. We did come to this conclusion the last time we covered this guy, but it is worth mentioning once again that the people who are really enjoying this are all of the doctors that are working with him. Oh, yeah. Because they're just like, this guy's putting my kid through college. Yeah, this is a doctor's dream. Yeah, a man like, who, I get to test out a whole bunch of new shit. A man who doesn't need your help. And but, I get paid for it. But he can definitely afford it. Yeah. And yeah, never mind the fact that Johnson readily admits that his quest for immortality has made it impossible to actually date, and therefore have any chance to use his penis for sexual purposes. Uh, last we checked, he did say that urination speed was one of his main goals. Which, so much time wasted. Yeah, you know, the average person, it doesn't seem like much, but you add it up. It's like my, my car uh, turns off the engine automatically at stoplights and it, ha- it has a, a clock on there. And somehow it says like in the last like six months, I've spent like hours just at stoplights. Huh. And yeah, you add that up. You're like, damn. Think about with, with your urinations, like you're peeing for God knows how long. And imagine if you could just go Dunk, and it just all comes out like, well, like tossing a bucket. This is like a, a classic comedy thing where at the end of one's life, dying in a hospital bed. Like, all right, you got five minutes that you've accrued by pissing too fast. Yeah. What are you going to do? And the guy just goes, ah, and just farts the nastiest fart ever. And he's like, all right, I'm ready to go. Take me. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Brian Johnson is never not in the news updating us on Project Blueprint's progress. And here's the Daily Mail. Who's also loving getting paid by his PR team. Uh huh. Yeah, we'll print whatever story you want. This is, yeah, this is their kind of shit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sure. Brian Johnson's calling? Cancel all my meetings. Yeah, we just financed this company for the next three years. Uh, Yeah, here's the Daily Mail this week recapping a recent podcast appearance uh, on the show, The Diary of a CEO. Biohacker Brian Johnson has claimed that he has managed to reverse age his penis by 15, 15 years. Okay. That's it? What's the difference? He's 46, so he has the penis of a 31-year-old? Okay. Ah, uh, yeah. Wow. Uh, that penis looks just like it did when I was 31 years old. What a... We what, did it. What? It was totally worth the, like, constant just getting fucking electroshock therapy and needles and just beating the shit out of my dick every single day. Forever. It was hey, worth you see it. that? It's a 31-year-old man's penis. Wow. What, what are you, 32? No, I'm 46. But it's working. And, like, the one person he impresses with it. Oh, my gosh. Do you want to have sex? No. Sorry, babe. No time. It's very painful. I got to get back in the cryo chamber. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, also, yes, it hurts a lot. Uh, you're putting too many wrinkles on my balls when, <laughs> by ejaculating. Somehow, simultaneously, it hurts a lot, and I have no feeling. I don't know how that works. It's a miserable existence. <laughs> you don't want to have anything to do with me. No. You don't want this life. <laughs> okay, well, it continues. Uh, he had claimed to have managed to reverse age his penis by 15 years, a very long time, thanks to his controversial de-aging methods. 
which include using electric shock, shock therapy uh. to rejuvenate his genitals. And Johnson, 46, has raised some eyebrows after sharing his pursuit to live forever, which have included swapping blood with his father and teenage son. And he, is, and he made it very clear that he means he wants every part of him to be working for longer. The millionaire isn't only focusing on his physical health, revealing he also wears a device on his penis to measure nighttime erections, which he says is indicative of how his health is improving. Everyone should know these three things. How much you weigh, how fast you're aging, and the duration of your nighttime erections, the health junkie told podcast host Stephen Barnett when he appeared on an episode of The Diary of a CEO. No, they wrote Dairy of a CEO. Oh, Dairy? Yeah, great. Because he's getting milked. Great journalism at the Daily Mail. Dairy of a CEO. Buddy, they just copy and pasted whatever the PR company sent. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Also, with it, I haven't looked into it, but I'm assuming this podcast is probably also funded by Brian Johnson. I there's a lot of podcasts is, out there. This is how like uh, there's like local uh, Dodgers sports talk on the AM radio, and one of those like billboard lawyers pays to be a contributing member of the show. Okay. It's like, hey, I'm here with my uh, big story of the day. Remember that if you get in an accident, call me. But well, we're not talking about accidents today. The Dodgers have been on a winning streak. Which lawyer? Is it Sweet James? I can't remember which is one. It, but, is uh, it called Jacob? It's it's is one of it those. Uh... It is. Uh, yeah, I can't remember who. It might actually be a car dealer guy. Oh. I don't know. I, I block it out because I'm just like, this is egregious. And yet you listen. It's just on in the car, buddy. Anyway, it continues. According to the biohacker, whose goal is to have the nighttime erection duration of an 18-year-old, the data is really important because it represents overall health. This data is really important because it represents psychological health, sexual health, Johnson explained. I I think they're doing a bad job. Either this is a poorly written press release that they copied and pasted, or the Daily Mail is not good at journalism. I don't know. He's uh, having an issue with his uh, brain because all the blood is in his penis. That that means working. This measure of sexual function, he explained on the podcast, could help predict other health outcomes like cardiovascular fitness. Cardiovascular health for people, for people are not familiar. (laughs) You can go to- This is an AI written article. You can go to the gym and build big biceps or whatever, but people are not familiar that nighttime erections are actually a meaningful health indicator, the father of three said. Amongst other therapies he uses to reverse his age, Johnson explained he uses focused shockwave therapy to improve his erection duration while he sleeps. So there's this technology. You have a wand and you sit in a chair and then the technician uses the wand and basically shocks your penis through (laughs) through the acoustic technology. (laughs) This man has a weird kink and he's just sharing it with everyone. It's a licensed doctor, not a dominatrix. Uh, Nothing weird. The doctor wears a black latex suit, but that is just, that's their profession. I I put a ball gag in my mouth just, you know, so I don't. Uh, What are these nipple clamps for? You sit in a chair and the technician uses the wand and basically shocks your penis through the acoustic technology, the entrepreneur said. He compared the unusual method to healing a torn ligament or injured joint. You're creating micro injuries, so then it rebuilds, he said. And so this technology is used for all over the entire body if you're trying to heal an ACL or you're trying to rejuvenate the knees or the joints, shoulders. He's... So no, it's not weird. They use this to uh, make tiny it's a medical device to, t- to make tiny tears in the body's muscles. So I'm just making tiny tears in my. Penis. I have seen. I've been getting because of the so running. <laughs> because of the running, I've been getting ads for like the you put the straps on your legs and it does a little shock on your legs. And I'm wondering why not just get a cock ring with that on it because that feels like it's doing the same thing. I would imagine. Well, that electroshock like muscle therapy like it doesn't do nothing, but it. it I don't think it affects. It doesn't work in a way that will actually make you like stronger or faster. Yeah, this seems completely pointless. It really just seems like he's kind of a freak. Yeah. And I, like, w- I wish he would just be more open about that. Yeah. I put this uh, vibrating device inside my asshole every day. Yeah. And uh, every once in a while, I give myself a, a cool buzz. This guy uh, spent... keeps me young. He spent his 20s and 30s doing like CEO venture capital shit. Yeah. And all he really wanted to do was be Steve-O. But now he's too old for that. Yeah. And Steve O's gone sober, so this is the closest thing he can do. I feel like this guy could solve a lot of problems by just like hiring a dominatrix. Yeah. Yeah. 
So yeah, it seems like despite... But they but, shut down that sophisticated brothel network, so it's impossible. Uh, well, you can still get one. Mm -hmm. There's dungeons. There's dungeons everywhere. But yeah, it sounds like despite putting so much thought into all of this, Brian Johnson kind of doesn't seem to understand causality all that well. Mm -hmm. If, like he says, nighttime boners are an indication of good health overall, it kind of seems like doing stuff like shock therapy and injections to improve your nighttime erections would just yield results that aren't actually an indicator of your overall health. They're just an indicator of how much you've been mutilating your dick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can take Viagra and have great nighttime yeah, erections. That doesn't probably. mean you're healthier. That just means your dick is harder. But whatever. Johnson now says that after two months of dick therapy, his penis is now 15 years younger. Whatever the hell that means. Uh, he even shared an infographic a while back explaining uh, some of his very scientific methodology. Uh, I guess he, he measures penis hardness on a scale from cheese to peeled banana to unpeeled banana to cucumber. And he has successfully achieved cucumber hardness. What cheese? What kind of cheese? Uh, Swiss cheese. If you get like some sharp cheddar or something, then... Uh... Uh, he, the picture shows what looks like Swiss cheese. Okay. And but yeah, you're right. There's some. There's hard cheeses. There's soft, soft cheeses. cheeses. I mean, he could just do a full cheese scale from like there's from uh, from nacho cheese. Yeah. To to brie, uh, all the way up to those sharp cheddars. Uh, also, there's a uh, depending on the ripeness, all of these bananas and cucumbers are going to have different. That's true. Firmness as well. That's true. Yeah. You failed to consider. This doesn't seem all that scientific. No, it doesn't. Mm. Hey, <laughs> ladies, I'm hard. Look, ladies, I'm hard as a cucumber. What? Um, that, to me, doesn't sound very hard. But I like the sound of that. Can I have sex with you, Brian? Absolutely Sorry, babe. Not. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, babe. I got to go down to the doctor and have him uh, torture my dick and balls with needles. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, he, he now claims that he has the heart of a 37-year-old, the skin of a 28-year-old, mm -hmm. and the fitness of of an 18-year-old. With a penis of a 32-year-old. Yeah. He's all so, over the place. Yeah, he's, he's got, got a, like four different lives going. He, he's got, yeah, he's all over the place. It is, um, well, you know, benefit of the doubt, being uh, in the fitness shape of an 18-year-old when you live in the United States of America, probably not too hard to achieve. He, well, no, he actually is in like, the, the pics of him without his shirt on, like, I'm, yeah, like, yeah, I'm he, sure he's in he's great in, shape. He's in great shape. Yeah. But like, and, that, and I'm not saying that isn't, like, a ton of work. But he's not the only one no. who's in incredible shape in his 40s. Some like, people are yeah. out there looking great and using their penis all the time. Yeah. This guy... The two kind of go hand in hand for a lot of people. This guy... He's on something else. Yeah, well, um, we'll see who's laughing in the year 3000. When Brian Johnson is still alive. But at what cost? <laughs> Oh. Anyways, okay then. Uh, great. I everyone, of course, is looking forward to further updates on Brian Johnson's dick, which he hopefully does not de-age too much. Be a real shame if he accidentally blew past his goal of having an 18-year-old penis and ended up with like child's penis. Yeah, just a little. Yeah, you are under arrest, sir. I gave myself a micro penis. It sucks, but that means I am. My, everything's working. Yeah. Working so well. It's a lot. My balls have gone back up into yeah. my body. They have ascended. Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm going to turn myself into a, a baby. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I wear a diaper. <laughs> yeah. In a hundred years, yeah, he's just going to, he's going to be a baby. He's going to be a This is going to be great because when he does eventually get old enough to wear a diaper, he's going to be like, it's working. See? See, I'm wearing a diaper. <laughs> I've successfully de-aged my... I now have the, the physical age of a, a two-year-old. Yeah, I don't do anything but cry and whine all day. <laughs> I fill my diaper and someone brings me food. I've done it. I've cracked the coat. And I only spent $40 million to get here. It was worth it. Every penny. What a journey. But moving on now to another rich guy with way too much money who should probably be out enjoying himself instead of what he is currently doing. Elon Musk. Yeah, there is always more Elon news to talk about. And this story is something we somehow missed in our other episodes this week. But it really seems as though this man is not doing well. Because <laughs> bullying works and don't stop. Yeah. Here's Insider. Staff at X, formerly Twitter, once considered calling the San Francisco police after an upset Elon Musk locked himself in his office. Author Ben Mesrick said... 
Mesrick, the author of the book Breaking Twitter, told CNBC's Squawk Box that Musk's chaotic X acquisition had serious impact on the billionaire's reputation. He got to a point where he locked himself in his office, was so upset that the Twitter employees were considering calling a wellness check by the San Francisco police because they thought he was going to self-harm himself, Mesrick said. I think he truly cares about his reputation, and he was shocked. Mesrick cited several incidents that led to a spiral for Musk, including getting booed at a Dave Chappelle comedy show and his son's car being attacked. The Elon before Twitter and the Elon after Twitter are two different Elons, he said. Elon didn't just break Twitter. Twitter broke Elon Musk. And yeah, this... And this, that's saying a lot because he was already this way. Yeah. Like, he's he's done been like this for a while, but... Also, like, the... the I can't remember where this all panned out, but, like, the car attack wasn't even that, like... No, that was just, like, some weirdo stalking Grimes who was, like... The, yeah, like, the I, that turned out to be mostly bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, it was refuted like the by, car like, police reports attacked. and, yeah. Like, their, Grimes' driver actually tried to run the guy over, mm -hmm. and the guy was like, hey, yeah, don't run me over. So, but, yes, that would be stressful, but, uh, yes, getting booed by an entire stadium of people... I'm I, instead of, you know, you know, doing what it did to him, it should have been a moment of self-reflection. Instead, it was just like, the world is so wrong that I need to take myself out of it. Like, I'm so curious, like, how long... I'm, I'm, excited, I'm interested in this book, because the Walter Isaacson book turned out to be... Uh, just basically the official autobiography of Elon Musk. Mm -hmm. Not a not a trustworthy document. Not something I'm really interested in reading. Yeah. I feel like all the all the juicy stuff already came out. Yeah. This book seems like uh, takes a more even handed uh, objective stance. But how long was he locked in there? I mean, long enough that they were worried that he was killing himself. <laughs> <laughs> if he goes, if it goes another five minutes without him answering this door, he is no longer gooning, and he yeah. needs help. No, that's the thing. It's like. These days, yeah, when when in a situation like that, it's like either they are slitting their wrists or or they're just gooning. Yeah, and it's best to just let them goon. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, this of course checks out. I mean, despite how many sideways crying, laughing emojis Elon posts, does he seem like a genuinely happy person? No, no he seems like a deeply insecure man who thought that endless money and attention would lead to personal fulfillment but also someone who will never be satisfied until every person on earth thinks he is literally the coolest and funniest person alive. Which will never happen, because he's yeah. not. It's almost sad, but oh well, I'm not going to feel bad for a billionaire. That's a shame. But moving on to our next story, a story about cops behaving badly. As we've seen repeatedly over the years, American cops love pulling out their guns in situations that really don't seem to warrant that level of response. And it turns out this problem isn't unique to our country. It's also a problem over in Australia. And no one is safe, not even other cops. Here's the Guardian. A police officer who had a firearm aimed at his head by a colleague for threatening to spoil the latest Top Gun blockbuster says he has completely lost trust in the force. Sydney's Downing Center local court was told that Constable Dominic Gaynor admitted pointing his gun at and threatening to shoot his junior colleague, Morgan Royston, at a Sydney city center police station in May last year. The 30-year-old was on duty behind the front desk of Day Street Police Station in Chinatown when then-probationary Constable Royston began discussing Top Gun Maverick, which he had seen the night before. The court has been told that Gaynor asked him not to ruin the movie, to which the younger officer replied, I'll spoil it for you. According to court documents, Gaynor responded, Don't spoil the movie, cunt. That's an Australian cunt, not an American one, so we can say it. Still aggressive, though. Yeah. Gaynor then threatened to shoot Royston before laughing and taking his Glock out of its holster. He pointed the weapon towards the other officer for around five seconds without his finger on the trigger. In what way could you possibly <laughs> even spoil Top Gun Maverick in a way that would be offensive to anyone who hasn't seen it? Like, yeah, Tom Cruise, they're going to win. They're going to yeah. do something militaristic. I still haven't even seen it, but like, I can't even imagine any way you could ruin the movie for me. What, what do you think happens in Top Gun Maverick? Uh, he flies his jet, and he's, like, super cool, and he proves the haters wrong. 
That's right. You nailed it. <laughs> that's, that's the first movie. And they, they made a sequel that pleased all the fans of the first movie. So I have, I'm left to assume it had a similar formula. Yeah, this one, he's the old dog. To please, no one point a gun at me for saying this yeah, on the whoa. show. Uh, Stop yeah, talking, cut. He's the old dog who teaches the new dogs, young, young dogs, new tricks or whatever. Is there a volleyball scene? I believe there is some kind of... Uh, <laughs> See, they, I, why mess with the formula? Yeah. It, it, I only saw it in the in the theaters and only once, but uh, I do remember there being some sexual tension between the men. Yeah, that's. I mean, it's it's the ultimate uh, sort of. Uh, it's it. The gays love it and the straights love it. It's a movie for everyone. Yeah, and it does wonders for the military industrial complex. Yeah, I mean, I, Navy signups are through the roof. Yeah, everyone for some reason really wants to get oiled up and play volleyball on the beach. B- joining the U.S. Navy seems like a great time. Uh huh. Chilling. It's like a nothing cruise. but nothing but respect for my navy. I love I love the navy. <laughs> <laughs> Out of all the, the the branches, yeah, navy number one. Keeping the city of San Diego afloat. Yeah, both with their car dealerships and uh, I guess all the bars, <laughs> just filling those bars. Yep. Anyways, this incident seems to have completely shattered Officer Royston's trust in the institution of policing, and he's no longer a cop. He's joined the navy. <laughs> No, I have no idea what Maybe. Right. But uh, as for the cop who pulled the gun, he got 100 hours of community service. He's going to lose it when one person that's working community service with him finds out that he hates having movies spoiled. People do like talking about movies, they just saw. Yeah. Hey, what do you think happens in Lord of the Rings? Shut up! Shut up, cunt! I haven't seen it yet. Anyways, before we move on to the headlines half of the show, we do first got to talk about this episode's sponsor, Hello Fresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients, and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. The holidays are right around the corner, and HelloFresh can help take the stress out of dinner by delivering everything you need to cook up tasty meals right to your door, saving you tons of time. The holiday season can be hectic, and that's where HelloFresh's 15-minute meals come in. These quick fixes help you get a wholesome meal on the table in less time than it takes to get delivery. Everyone wants to cut back on errands and spending time in checkout lines this time of year, so skip that extra grocery store trip and instead get fresh ingredients and delicious recipes delivered right to your door with HelloFresh. Just pick your meals, decide on a delivery date, and sit back. If all this sounds similar to Green Chef, that's another one of our sponsors. That's because HelloFresh also owns Green Chef, and with a wider array of meal plans to choose from, there's something for everyone. For us, HelloFresh really comes in clutch with their quick and easy bowls, which are ready in just 20 minutes. And they also won't fill your sink with dirty pots and pans to clean up once you're done. Uh, yeah. And on next week's menu, they've got two bowls that we are very excited to try. I'm, I'm licking my lips, uh, looking at the sweet chili pork and cabbage stir fry bowl with crispy fried onions and the taqueria chicken bowls with corn esquites, sour cream, hot sauce, and cilantro. Mmm. Mmm. So go to HelloFresh.com slash Weekly Weird Free and you use code Weekly Weird Free. This is a hell of a deal here. <laughs> free breakfast for life. What? It's one breakfast item per box as long as your subscription is active. Damn. Forever. That is free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com. Infinite breakfast hacks. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash Weekly Weird Free with code Weekly Weird Free. HelloFresh. America's number one meal kit. Damn. All right, well, let's get back to the headlines or the the headlines part of the show with the weirdest, craziest headlines from around the world this week, starting with drunk grizzlies keep getting hit by trains in Montana. That's too bad. Are these freight trains or like uh, tourist trains? Uh, It's a real sad thing. Yeah. Uh, Wait, hold on. First of all, how are these grizzlies drunk? Eating fermented stuff? or That's just the thing. So the trains on these tracks... Sometimes they're transporting agricultural goods, grains and such like that. And, you know, the shaking of the train, the stuff falls off and it lands on the railroad tracks. Mm -hmm. And if it rains a little bit, fermentation can naturally occur. And so a bear comes along, says, oh, that smells good. So the bear's drinking box call The bear wine. smells it from a mile away and just sort of floats over there. Yeah. Because uh, that's that's how bears... They do. They travel by floating. Uh, uh, they, yeah. they, they, they <laughs> travel by floating along scent lines. Mm, yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, the bear eats the fermented uh, agricultural stuff that fell off the train and gets a little tipsy. And they're drunk. 
on the train tracks. And then as train starts coming, they're like, oh, fuck, I got to go. Oh, geez. And well, then they get, way to go. they get killed. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's actually really sad. This is just more anti-train propaganda from big government. <laughs> I mean. This is just like Donald Trump with the windmills killing birds. <laughs> He cares so much about We can't him. do anything progressive because like clearly the results don't lie. Yeah. He 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 loves birds so much. Believe me. He he didn't he didn't he's like the first president in a uh, hundred years to not have a dog in the White House. But that's just because He hates all animals except uh, for the birds. Yeah, he had lots of, uh, there was just birds flying around the Oval Office. He loves them all. When he heard this thing's for the birds, he thought everyone meant Earth. Yeah. Yeah. Earth is for the birds. <laughs> That's right. Florida man busted with five alligators in his bathtub that he caught at nearby pond, FWC says. I'm not up to date on the laws of Florida, but back in my day, if you caught it, you kept it. Yeah, I mean, they're everywhere. Uh, are we just supposed to treat You can these... hunt them, so... I guess, I guess there's a difference when you're keeping it in your house as a pet, which makes sense because they do grow up to be quite dangerous. Then you got to flush them down the toilet. <laughs> But in Florida, what is it, where does that even go? The turlet in Florida? Yeah. Uh, straight straight down into, your, into the dirt under your foundation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we have sewer systems. We're not uh, that back country. Okay, well. A lot of people do have septic tanks still, though. Oh, you don't want to be playing catch football and, and step into some mud? Wait, it's dry out today. What is going on? That's poop. That's gross. But yeah, um, I guess you can't just... Go down to the pond and take the readily available young gators that are there waiting for you to adopt them. I guess that's a crime. You can't keep... He had them in the bathtub and, like, he had, like, you know, four inches of water in there. So, like, yeah, he had, like, his own little aquarium of gators. Yeah. And uh, I hope he had a second bathroom that he could actually use for bathing, but... uh, No, he bathed with the gators. And, yeah, they were all, like... Makes you young again. They're all, like, a foot long. Uh, Gators... Young gators are very cute. Yeah. Razor sharp little teeth. Yeah, you, I mean, don't put them near, don't put them near anything. Luckily, the Lord Jesus above made all their muscles clamp down and not open up. That's right. You just so gotta you just hold whoop. it. Yep. Yeah. Porn star's pet python bites partner's penis in horror scene. Blood everywhere. I I I guess it didn't happen while they were filming. Yeah. Uh, penetration it happened right after. What a shot that would have been. But um, yeah, I know that would have been the real money shot. Mm-hmm. Um, um, you know what would be really funny if this happened to Brian Johnson? I mean, yeah, I, all that work just to have your penis shredded by a python. Well, this would never happen. Brian Johnson, part of his longevity is just never putting himself in any sort of danger. So being around a snake, uh, he, too, too, too Brian many variables. Johnson, Brian Johnson, the type of multimillionaire that would blame a woman's vagina for making his penis wrinkly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I succumbed to the desires once, and look what happened. Look what you did. Like a prune. Look what you did, you you haggard wench. You shrew. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, sucks to be that guy with the... Well, who knows? Penis. We'll have to wait for the results. Maybe this is the treatment that Brian Johnson's been looking for. Yeah, it's like Maybe those people this... that, that handle the snakes because they're religious. Yeah, your penis gets bit by a python. It turns into a python. By superhero logic. Yes. Yep. So, I guess we'll see. Someone, this could, could be the best thing that happened to this guy. Someone uh, sneak this article into his doctor's newsletters. That, yeah, the only way to make Brian Johnson's saga funnier would be if he got into, like, if he got into, like, natural medicine. Yeah. Because right now he's way too dependent on, like, actual doctors who, you know, have no incentive to bring harm to him. Yeah. Like they need to actually keep him alive as long yeah, as possible. Yeah, uh, but if, if he got really into just, like drinking, drinking his piss and like sunning his butthole and shit, that would make it even better. Yeah. Nothing and, like, and Lord knows that guy's asshole needs sun. Just look at the skin on his face. Yeah. He's almost translucent. Yeah. It's not. He doesn't look good. I. Yeah. I would. You know, good for him. Drink all that unpasteurized milk and go sun that asshole. Mm-hmm. After 12 years of silence, Neon Cat says, free Palestine. Thank you, Neon Cat. Yeah, and I didn't realize it had been that long. 
A lot of people watching this probably weren't even born when the last time <laughs> Neon Cat was around. Uh, I'm pretty sure our audience is older than 11. It's a pixelated cat riding on a fucking uh, Pop-Tart with a mm-hmm. rainbow and Much shit. like how bears uh, transport themselves through smell lines, cats yeah. tend to fly with rainbows. I did, and I remember like at the time, I, I didn't get it. I was like, that's cool and amusing. I didn't understand why it became such a phenomenon. Hmm. But this video is great. Wait, it, why did it become such a phenomenon? I don't know. People were obsessed with Neon Cat. Oh, well, yeah, just because it was a cat thing that had like bright, vivid colors. I guess. I'm like, hey, that's funny. But like, yeah, people got way into it. But yeah. yeah. I mean, this was at the same time as like Grumpy Cat, Keyboard Cat. It was yeah. The, the, yeah, there was okay. a lot going on. Anyway, yeah. A lot yeah. of cringe millennial uh, stuff going on. Anyway, yeah. It's, it, 12 years of no updates. And then, uh, yeah, <laughs> it posts the video. Starts off like the old one and then... Hard cut five seconds in, it's like, free Palestine, end the occupation, no to genocide, with like explosions behind it. So thank you, Neon Cat. If uh, anyone's going to bring the elder millennials around, it's going to be Neon Cat. Yeah, although I don't think, I don't think millennials really need the help uh, based on No, millennials, the dude, Gen, Gen, <laughs> Gen Z is fine. There's a lot of weirdo millennials. There are, but I think they're louder than they are numerous. Yeah. I don't know. Las Vegas Sphere reports $98.4 million loss. Chief financial officer quits. Well, my work here is done. Yeah, I, I it, it does seem like a very expensive thing just to, to operate, uh, like not even the, construct. Just even the electricity costs in a in a city that relies on a dam that barely fucking works anymore for most well, of its this electricity. This year was fine, but like, yeah, uh, <laughs> up until this point, it's like, man, you would assume that maybe it, there would be better uses for uh, this electricity than fueling the uh, kill zone on planet Earth like a video game character. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, and all, I mean, I think the problem, because I went to Vegas. I was very excited to see it, and wasn't that impressive. It only does the cool stuff once per hour for like five minutes. The rest of the time, it looks like a fucking screensaver. I mean, it, not a cool screensaver. In that sense, it's kind of like our Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower actually looks cool, though. And it does a little light-up thing every once in a while. But uh, the Parisians hated that fucking thing when it was built. Right, yeah. At the time, it was they're like, when are you tearing this down? Because it was supposed to be and temporary. And he said, ha ha, see you later. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to build the Statue of Liberty now. Wow, yeah. Yeah. So uh, this will be, you know, in 100 years, everyone's going to be like, do not make fun of our sphere. Yeah. That is that's, ours. That sphere is, is a symbol of our resilience in the climate wars. And at this point, it is literally just powered by people uh, turning cranks down below it because we have no more water on Earth. But I'm just like, how are they, how are they losing this much money like, they're doing, like, sold-out U2 concerts, like, yeah, but five like, nights a week. But think of how much the production and the band costs. Yeah, I guess so. And, like, the, as big as it is, it's not like the seating capacity is bigger than any arena or stadium. Yeah. And, and then just the power alone. And they, they run ads on it, and I imagine that's a very expensive billboard yeah. to purchase, but, yeah, also an expensive billboard to run yeah. and operate. So, yeah, yeah. Um, would be very funny if after like a year or two, it's just the blue screen of death permanently. Yeah. Sorry. We're closed. Virginia bird bandit suspect arrested after robbing victim at knife point while parrot sat on hat and shoulder. Cool. We talked about this guy in the headlines a couple months back, but uh, he, was, he was robbing people while, while it's hard he to got not, birds on his head and stuff. Hard to not be intimidated by that. Yeah, guy. You just don't see guys with parrots on them anymore. Not since the pirate days. I got to get you to Florida. I mean, you do see, there are bird guys. Uh, they drive around with golf carts with birds all over it, them. It's the, the beach cities. All the beach cities, like Venice, Santa Monica, Jimmy Newport. Jimmy Buffett, uh, yeah. is, he's responsible. There was like one guy, I used to go to Newport Beach as a kid in the summer. And there was like a guy there at the time who rode his bike up and down the boardwalk and had like 10 fucking birds just yeah. like on all his arms and his head. So yeah, this guy, uh, it's only been a couple months, but they were like, all right, we're going to look for the guy who has birds on his head. And I guess they finally, they got him. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. And After an extensive, exhaustive search. I'm assuming they, they took his birds away from him, put them in bird jail. The real, the real punishment. 
They're in, they, they separated them to interrogate the birds to see if they squeal. Yeah. But they were only repeating the same story he told the cops. Uh-huh. Damn it. Ah, they're too good. Orthodontist offers free gun with a Invisalign treatment. <laughs> this is literally part of that Bowling for Columbine movie 20 years ago. Yeah, no, this they is... They sign up for a new bank account and you get a gun. This is such a, like, common thing in parts of this country. Yeah. Where it's just, uh, yeah, a special offer right now. You, you come in and sign up and uh, free gun. You get a gun. You get a Glock. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just, I mean, I find it weird. A lot of people find it weird, but in, in some parts of this, this beautiful, the multi... Vast, beautiful this, country. Yeah, this multi-dimensional country of ours, that is a normal thing. In fact, sometimes you show up at the orthodontist, it's like, hey, no, what, no gun? Well, I'm not sure I want to do business here. I, Where's my free gun? When I used to go to the orthodontist, they give you a little candy or something at the end. Yeah. But I guess in some parts of this country, people expect more. Do they do the, uh, uh, you get a stake if you get your windshield repaired here in California? What? That was a big thing in Florida. Where? Uh, in, in Florida, if you have like a crack in your windshield, they would repair your windshield and you'd get a free steak. I've never heard of this. Really? Like, do they cook the steak for you? How no, does that I think you just give you like a, you prepare the steak on your own. Oh, oh, like a, like a. It's a gift. Uh, but for raw, whatever reason. Raw meat. Yeah, but for whatever reason, like the windshield companies in particular. <laughs> I don't understand. Yeah, that's a very weird uh, connection. Yeah, free steak with I mean, windshield repair. I hey, I'll take a free steak, but yeah. it's just not what you expect when you're getting your windows done. Well, uh, some people do expect that, Elliot. I and, guess they do. And if I went out here and had a problem with my windshield, I'd be like, hey, hey where's uh, where's my steak? These you, damn liberals. What, are, are they going to give me some tofu instead? Aren't you uh, forgetting something? <laughs> I believe you owe me a <laughs> T-bone steak. Man has wrong organ removed by surgeons who couldn't find his appendix. There's a lot of stuff oh going on in there. God, so. fucking, this is a nightmare. Yeah, they, they removed his colon. Ooh! Ooh! So now he literally has to shit in a bag. Well, that's going to be great for lines at Disneyland. I guess. If we all just had our colons removed, we wouldn't have a problem with people shitting. Well, they'd probably just dump their bags. Oh, this bag's so heavy. Stop! Stop! I, I promised them there'd be no more poop talk. I promised the viewers that they were skipping the only poop talk. And oh, here you are. I'm sorry. I accidentally handed you my colostomy bag instead of your milkshake. Can I get that back? <laughs> Enough. <laughs> Enough. All right. All right. One more headline. I need to go wash my mouth out with Listerine. I'm, I'm going to turn it into something nasty, so you have to read this one. Mustangs, Chargers, and Camaros banned from coffee and cars in Texas. Is this because they kept getting in accidents afterwards? Yes. So, yeah, so coffee and cars, I, I think it might have started in, in Texas, but it's, it's fucking everywhere now. Yeah. And it's just, it's just like a Saturday morning meetup for people who have cool cars to like drink coffee and look at each other's cars. They, they, to get out of the house. Uh, yeah, get yeah. away from the, the nagging bitch wife. <laughs> um... <laughs> But uh, yeah, it seems like a pretty, you know, it's it's whatever. It's a fun hobby. And uh, <laughs> what? Because like, I've been to these with my dad and that is how every dude there is. It's like, Ugh. oh, I got to go to fucking Costco after this fucking God damn it. The rest of my weekend sucks. Uh, but yeah, no, over the years, a phenomenon that I've noticed, it, not even being like involved at all in the like car culture. Yeah. Uh, is that. The only videos you ever see come out of these these car meetups are people driving Mustangs, Camaros, and uh, Chargers and Challengers who fucking burn out their tires and then pull out in the street and they haven't driven their real rear wheel drive car long enough to understand how that affects uh, turning while accelerating and they just crash into fucking trees. And yeah, they lose control while instantly. like fifty people watch. Yeah. And I, I guess it became such a problem for this chapter of Cars and Coffee. They issued a uh, indefinite ban on anyone who even owns those cars. They're like, there's got to be a connection here. It's always these cars. So if you're the type of person who owns it, sorry, you can't come. I know it's been a long time. We really thought that this problem would work itself out because there's only so <laughs> many people that can yeah. keep crashing these cars. But sure enough, people keep buying them. So we have to make a rule. Well, it's like they're stupid and dangerous, but not in a lethal way, just in a way that's embarrassing and expensive. Yeah. I do love like, Specifically in LA, you can always tell who a tourist is because they're driving a convertible Mustang. They're either a tourist or Kale Anonymous. 
Don't don't dox our buddy Kale. <laughs> but yes, he does. I think he's shown his car in his videos. He it's does fine. drive a convertible Mustang. Yeah. And hey, good for him. No wrecks as far as I know. Yeah. He drives it responsibly. He does. Well, he's he, the, the only responsible Mustang owner. He, he learned by driving Ferraris. Yeah, that's true. For the Need for Speed movie junket. Yeah. yeah he did. A, he almost lost control at the beginning of that one, too. Remember that? Yeah. Even, uh, what's his name? Uh, the, the younger Breaking Bad guy. Aaron Paul. Aaron Paul was like, oh! That guy gonna be okay? <laughs> Well, he tried to do a little burnout at the San Francisco Giants at the there, baseball parking lot. Uh, well, there's your annual reminder that Need for Speed was a movie that came out. It certainly was, but it'll never match the naming, uh, the, the creative minds who named the Gran Turismo movie. Gran Turismo based on a true story. That is the full title of the movie. <laughs> that's exciting. Yeah. I'll have to get around to that one. No, you won't. No, I won't. Anyway, that's our show. Be sure to, uh, if you could, if Spare you would, like. my lord, if you would, please like the video. Jingle comment, jangle, sp- give a comment, like. Comment, subscribe, ring the bell. Obviously, you're going to want to know when these come out. It's usually in the middle of the night, but wake your ass up. New video. And um, yeah, and we have other videos, of course. We talked about the Republican debate and what a, what a shit show. What a pointless shit show it was. Yeah, it's a... Uh... That one went up late, too, because uh, the, I edited so late that the date had changed and I didn't realize what day it was. Oh. And uh, But it's up now. You can go. It was up this morning. So. All right. And uh, also, we talked about Grok. Find yeah. out what that is. Yeah, you're going to you're gonna have to figure out for yourself what Grok is. Mm-hmm. Grok. We will see you next week. Have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy your cars and coffee or whatever you have. Bit Drive planned. safely. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye.